All right. So thank you all for joining the 2023 Annual Grants Panel A Session 2. My name is Nikki Kirk. I'm the Director of Community Investment with the Indy Arts Council, and I will serve as our panel moderator today. First, I'd like to do, introduce our panelists for today's session. Lindsay Aikens, the Arts Commission of Greater Toledo Director of Capacity and Engagement. Megan Berner, City of Reno Arts and Cultural Manager. Ashraf Hashim, uh, Seattle Office of Arts and Culture Partnerships, Education and Grants Manager. Mia Hooper, Greater Pittsburgh Arts Council's Director of Development and Grant Making. And then James Adams, DeSoto Arts Commission Chairman. He is unable to join us today due to unforeseen family emergency. So I will read out any comments that he has shared in the system if they differ from what the panelists present, present have stated. Today, our panelists will be doing a public review of level one applications. The panel will not state scores publicly, but comments will be shared. If a panelist states something that conflicts with factual information presented in your organization's application, please use the applicant clarification form to correct their statements. My colleague, Zach Patterson, will post that in the chat box. If clarification is deemed necessary for any part of the review, panelists will be able to revisit scoring prior to final submission of their grant scores. Please remember there is no opportunity to directly answer questions from the audience. The form is for factual clarification only. If you do have any questions or comments about the panel discussion or process, we ask that you direct those questions to grants at indiearts.org beginning next week, Monday, April 17th. The panel review process will be streamed from 1 to 5 p.m. today with a 15-minute break in the middle. You can find the schedule for today's review on our website. This session is being live streamed and recorded and is available on our YouTube account. As a reminder, grant applicants will be notified of their awards by Friday, May 5th. And now I'd like to welcome Indy Arts Council's President and CEO, Julie Goodman, for our official welcome and to start the annual grants panel review process. Thanks, Nikki, and good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be with you and welcome to day two of our 2023 annual grants program and our public panel process. Um, the Indy Arts Council's mission is to foster meaningful engagement in the arts by nurturing a culture where artists and arts organizations thrive. And boy, after the last few years, we are so grateful to report that our creative economy is thriving. Um, across our sector, we see evidence of growth and innovation, increasing equity, and new partnerships. And for 36 years, the City of Indianapolis has entrusted the Arts Council to invest public funds supporting the community impact that's generated by our nonprofit arts and cultural organizations. And the awards are determined through an independent panel review that is inclusive, accessible, transparent, and advances the city's racial equity priorities. So this week, and you're in for a treat because these panelists are terrific, our expert panelists are reviewing a record 87 applications, thanks again panelists, um, that will result in a total of $1.5 million in general operating support grants. And the city increased this grant funding in 2023 as part of their annual budget process by 15% so that more organizations could apply and receive funding. And so we're really pleased that 16 new organizations applied this year. And along with organizations that have been part of this program for the entire 36 years. So as the panelists discuss the ap applications, we're going to hear examples, a lot of, of wonderful examples of the impact that these 87 organizations are having on artists and audiences in our community. And it's also important to recognize that these organizations are funded that, that are funded through the program generate $440 million in annual economic impact. They support 30,000 jobs in central Indiana and they serve 8 million residents and visitors. So on behalf of the Indy Arts Council, our board and our staff and all of our community partners, I just wanna thank each applicant for their contributions to our community. I wanna extend our heartfelt appreciation to our panelists for investing their time and expertise into this process. And a final thanks to our board, our grants committee, and our fabulous staff for their tireless work to advance our mission every day. Thanks. Thank you, Julie. And I also wanna thank uh, Zach Patterson as well, who's working behind the scenes this week uh, to support the panel process. 
And good afternoon to all our panelists and Zoom attendees. As a reminder, we'll be reviewing these 87 applications this week and average about 21 each day. Our incredible panelists have reviewed all of today's applications and will engage in a group feedback session. As I noted, the panelists will not verbally announce their scores, but today's comments do reflect those scores. Once all applications are publicly reviewed, we will convert the panel scores into a percentile ranking. By May 5th, applicants will be notified of their award amounts and their percentile ranking. As a reminder, the panel scores all applications in three main areas, artistic merit, organizational capacity, community impact, and all three criteria center racial and socioeconomic equity. With that, let's begin. Today's first application is a request from the Philippine Cultural Community Center. Their mission is to educate and inspire individuals to self-discovery, serve the Filipino-American community, and promote the cultural, culture and heritage of the Philippine Islands through their art and social programs. They were founded in 2020. They have a 2022 operating income of 171,000. They have 10 board members, zero full-time employees, and they served uh, 100,000 people in 2022. With that, I will ask Lindsay to begin the discussion. Thank you. Um, I was very excited uh, to read this grant application. Um, I think this organization does a lot of things to serve their community. I got the impression that maybe they are new to grant writing. And so um, I just have like a few things that I hope are constructive criticism to help them um, in future applications. I just thought that some of the sections were a little light on information and that there was just a little bit more in each area that I, I, I think I wasn't getting the full picture. Um, they provide social services to their community. And so I think um, the, the full story of really what how arts and culture, how the arts portion of what they're doing um, was being executed got somewhat lost in there. But um, uh, I was just left with a few questions after I read through this. Um, so I, I think that there are some areas they could, they could work on when it comes to, to, to fine tuning the details in their application. For instance, I was a little confused about some of the board member demographic numbers. Um, things just didn't quite add up. I think I understood the story that they were telling, but um, I think just a little bit more attention to detail would have been really useful. Um, and, and actually what I got from their strategic plan gave me a much better understanding of what their programming was accomplishing. Um, uh, and I would expect that in the next year that gets a little bit more updated with some specific details on how they might grow and measure the growth of their programs because that plan was also a bit more of a programs rundown rather than a strategy or direction. So I think there's there's a lot of 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 growing to do um, professionally in this this organization. Um, I also was a little bit unclear about how you got to the audience and participant numbers. Um, there was it states that you're reaching a lot of people, hundred thousand people. I just wanted to know a little bit more about how the programming was getting you to those numbers. Just be a little bit more specific about which how each part each facet of what you do which is a lot of amazing things how many people are you reaching um and and also to get into more detail about some of the really cool sounding things i wanted to know so much more about friendship days really tell that story um some of the things that sounded really exciting and like were the kinds of things we'd want to hear about in this application um, you kind of glanced over. So so really toot your horn in, in these sections um, when you can. Um, with that, I will, I will pass it off. Great, thank you. Any other panel comments? Go ahead, Mia. Um, I wanted to add that I really liked um, their programming that focuses on multiple racial identities and how they overlap. Um, I thought that was really unique. Um, and I really appreciated that. Um, but I shared the same concerns that, you know, Lindsay had shared. Thank you. Anyone else have comments they want to share? I'll jump in and mention that, um, 
Um, I really appreciated to some of that programming you mentioned, Mia and Lindsay. Yes, agree with um, with your um, constructive criticisms there. The volunteer numbers at a thousand seem a little bit high. We'll take your word for it, though, of course. And yeah, the hundred thousand um, audience participants also seem a little bit more best guess. Um, so any way we could get explanations on on how y'all get came to those would be amazing. Um, the there's not a ton of mention of fiscal stability or sustainable practices uh, in the organizational capacity section, but I do really appreciate the racially mixed founders and board and the founder helping found API Pride in the city is really um, great. Clearly it shows up in their programming. I love the um, API drag shows, for example. It's a nice touch. Um, and yeah, the partnerships seem broad and um, and deeply place-based as well as keeping relevant perspectives from the communities that are being served um, in the conversation. Um, free programs and um, make sense for the uh, no earned income in the budget. Um, there were a couple of questions I had with the budget in terms of the big corporate contributions, the fundraising and special events and the artistic personnel jumps, um, but I appreciated that the income heavily weighed, outweighed the expenses. Um, yeah, thank you. Great, right, thank you. Any additional comments? The only additional comment that I have from James um, outside of what y'all have already stated is um, he just wanted to know more about the experts leading the work. So just having some more detail there about um, the, the artistic leaders in that space. Great. If there are no further comments, please update your scores in the system if needed. Thank you. As previously announced, all scores will be kept confidential. The next application is a request from Freetown Village. Mission of Freetown Village is um, Freetown Village is a living history museum with the mission to educate the public about African American lives, arts, and culture in Indiana through living history exhibits, allied programs, and the collection and preservation of artifacts. They were founded in 1985. They have an operating income in 2022 of 172,611. They have 11 board members, two full-time employees, and their audience serves in 2022 with 7,351. And with that, I will ask Ashraf to begin the discussion. Thank you. Um, I really love reading about this organization and their programs. I'll start with the community impact section. I love, um, yeah, I love their commitment to putting African American performers to work, including 10 to 15 annually at the very least, in addition to having those year round singers doing their own training uh, as musicians and artists do. Um, and that, that four to six week training to ensure performers are properly able to represent those stories that are being told was a really, um, really great detail as well. I really appreciated. Um, in terms of access, the virtual programming. Um, allows them to expand participation and it's going hybrid in 2023, um, which is really exciting for that higher education partnership. Um, I loved hearing about the um, touring programs and how they built in ge geographic diversity, meet communities where they are, presented at different times of the day in accessible venues and intergenerational audiences. Um, and yeah, the partnerships um, seem pretty robust in terms of educational and cultural institutions. Um, and yeah, the school partnerships focus on standards-based curriculum and um, and also racial sensitivity training for both teachers and students, I thought was a really great use of their um, expertise and their what the community was was asking them to do. It was a way for them to, to gain some revenue to and using that uh, expertise. Um, and in terms of artistic merit, um, um, I really um, appreciate that the founder is still running the organization 40 plus years later, um, and they're still connecting current events to the programming to stay relevant. Um, there is an education committee and artistic staff which seem knowledgeable and experienced. However, I would have, would have loved to see some credentials um, or at least some, um, some more bios or information about those folks represented in the, in the, in the text. 
Um, I uh, did see some information about evaluation and assessment components, including debrief, program evaluations, anecdotal comments. It seems iterative and connects it to the next season and further develops programs and partnerships, which is great. And um, I really loved hearing about the uh, youth who experienced the programs as they were young are now parents themselves. And they are anecdotally reporting how its impact um, had on them when they were young people in community too. So it's really great um, full circle. And in terms of budget and organizational capacity, um, I appreciate the notes explaining the reasoning behind the big projected jumps in numbers. The question I have there is if the anticipated grants don't come in, um, will the budget need to be adjusted to reflect it? Is there any money in the bank um, to keep you all good? Um, the board, um, it said nine members somewhere in the text and 11 somewhere else in the application. So that was just a little bit confusing, but otherwise committee structure seems good. And the board annual self-assessment is great. I love that there's succession planning as well. Um, yeah, I think I'll just leave it right there. Great, thank you. Um, Megan, do you have any additional comments? Um, not a lot. I think Ashraf covered a lot in his um, comments there. And I had a lot of similar comments. Um, I love that they're hiring and training local performers and teaching artists and other creatives. Um, for the most part, I thought they showed evidence of providing equitable opportunities um, for employment for communities traditionally lacking access, but I felt it could be clarified a little bit in the narrative. Um, and some of that was also through um, it, it not really being clear what criteria are used to select talent. The application does mention auditions, but not um, anything really beyond that. Um, and then I agree, the budget I felt was really ambitious in comparison to the last fiscal year. They did explain that, so that was good. Um, and there's, I, I liked that they showed evidence of long-term planning and thinking about a succession plan. They didn't really present any explicit DEI strategies in their planning or elsewhere. And I understand this organization already serves and is centered around a historically underserved population, but I think it would still be good to mention that in the application materials. Thank you. Any other panel comments? Okay, I think for um, James, the only additional PC noted was given the timeline submitted in the strategic plan, he wanted um, an updated understanding of, of where this organization was with its strategic plan, um, whether they were going to just update the current one or if they were going to go through a strategic planning process. So just more information on that is, is something that he noted. Great, if there are no further comments, please update your scores in the system if needed. Great. The next application is a request from Storefront Theater of Indianapolis. Storefront Theater of Indianapolis is a professional not-for-profit theater company that focuses on new plays by playwrights that are underrepresented in American theater. Storefront stages productions in the classic Chicago-style manner in a small, intimate space with performances that exhibit raw emotional truth. Their broad facility on Keystone and 55th is also home um, to an art gallery that hosts the work of Indianapolis artists throughout the year. Storefront admissions are donation only in order to increase access to their programming. They were founded in 2016. They had a 2022 operating income of 172,888. They have 12 board members, one full-time employee, and the audience served in 2022 was 1,754. And with that, I will ask Mia to begin the discussion. Yeah, so I really enjoyed reading this application. Um, I thought they demonstrated a strong and experienced leadership. Um, I liked that all performers and production staff were paid the same rate, um, regardless of their experience level. Um, you know, the shows are pay what you want. I um, also really liked the piece of focusing or having multiple casts for the young for the youth actors so that they get the real world experience of being in the performance, not just acting classes. Um, I really liked that. Um, and I liked uh, that they were that they talked about being in the process of transitioning their board over the next two years to achieve greater racial diversity. 
Um, some things that I had a few questions about was uh, there was a large increase in the artistic personnel expenses, and I would have loved a little more detail about why. Um, and I felt the strategic goals could have been more clear and measurable strategies could have been outlined. Um, but other than that, I thought it was a pretty strong application. Great, thank you. Lindsay, anything you'd like to add? Yeah. Um... In, the, in regards to um, their community impact, um, kind of at first glance, I thought that this application sort of talked a good talk, but um, after a couple of read-throughs, I sort of, I was getting the impression that they were dancing around, like demonstrating specifically how they're committed to racial and soci socioeconomic equity. So um there weren't any specific metrics or goals listed that let me know that they were successful in achieving their mission, which they list as, you know, their professional not-for-profit theater company focusing on new plays by playwrights that are up underrepresented. I I don't I didn't quite know what that meant, and it, it they didn't really go into detail on that. So I just wanted a little bit more about how they know they were reaching that goal. Um, and then sort of in that same same vein, um, you know, they noted they plan to work with schools with underserved or non-existent theater arts programs. Um, but what do those schools look like? What are who what students are participating? Is are are you getting where you want to go um, by working with these populations? And just define what's an underrepresented playwright. Tell, like just tell me what that means. Um, and that that would have just, I think, helped. Um, uh, as I read through this application. Thank you. Any additional panel comments? Um, I think I just want to add to that because I thought there were some really strong pieces to this application, but the talent section for me was like not specific in any way. Um, and it would really help in the application to be direct and cite specific examples, um, especially of how the organization ensures equitable casting. So just saying that the programming demands it isn't really telling us anything. Uh, so if you could use specific examples, that would really, really help that. I wanted to add a couple of things too. Um, I appreciate their um, yeah, donation only admission. Um, that's just generally, um, exemplary practice um, and the fact that the leadership and the staff were around to welcome folks takes away the hoity-toityness of what theater with a capital T could be um, and so that really builds the field and builds the audiences in a really authentic way um, arts marketplaces is a nice touch to be able to get folks paid I did have a question around the free education programs with local school districts just like you did Lindsay um, do those students get paid um, and if not how do those opportunities compete with after school part-time jobs or things that are needed to help students um, thrive with their families as well and um, let's see, I had a note here about the term creatively rigorous, kind of like what you mentioned yesterday, Mia, around um, one of the other applicants. That's an admirable thing to say. However, it could lead to harmful work environments, perpetuating unpaid labor off the clock. Something to think about um, when you're thinking about um, creatively rigorous as one of the core values of the organization. It is admirable, but it does kind of come with those come with those realities as well. Um, evaluation didn't really seem to be discussed a ton here too, um, but the fair wages for artists is awesome. And um, as far as budget goes, doesn't seem to be any fundraising or special events revenue in 2023. I was wondering about why that was. And then there does seem to be some high COVID-19 recovery funding coming in the second fiscal year that was mentioned. Um, and the question there is, how does the work plan on sustainability with that funding? Um, but otherwise, um, yeah, strategic plans current and the um, intentional organic board transition does seem like a reasonable timeline to better match the culture of the programming of the audience. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any additional comments? Okay, if there are no further comments, please update your scores in the system if needed. Great. The next application is a request from Indianapolis Baroque Orchestra. 
It is the mission of the Indianapolis Baroque Orchestra to perform and promote music of the 17th and 18th century using period instruments and historically informed performance practices. They believe in enriching, educating, and inspiring the Indiana community and beyond by fostering connections between the past and the present. They were founded in 2004, the 2022 operating income of 185330 they have nine board members, zero full-time employees, and audience served in 2022 is 850. And with that, I will ask Ashraf to begin the discussion. Thank you. Yes, um, this was um, a fun organization to read about. I love that it's a woman-led woman -led organization. I love that um, they have a, a library partnership where they do cover songs with Baroque instruments. That sounds awesome, actually, um, and adorable at the same time. Um, I do think that um, yeah, the other commitment to paying um, and providing leadership opportunities for young artists is exemplary. Um, I definitely had some questions, though, around um, the uh, targeted outreach to build a diverse audience. There's definitely some discounts discussed for students and elderly, but not really beyond that. The access section told me a lot about their marketing plan, which doesn't really tell me much about their, again, access goals. Um, I do appreciate they removed gendered language. That's pretty cool. Um, but otherwise, there is a hesitancy to name racial equity as a primary goal. Um, they talk about concerted effort to attract more diverse audience, only not only in regards to ethnicity, but also age, income, education, life experiences. Um, that that is avoiding avoiding racial equity fully um, to me. So that was a little bit disappointing. And again, doesn't really talk about diversifying the audience or the ensemble there. Um, but that St. John's Passion performance does seem like a cool, large public square show where youth and students are incorporated. And that does seem to really um, extend arts experiences for the for the community in a big way. I did think it was a bit of a stretch to say that the annual faculty concert series at UND enriches the cultural life of the Indy South Side if they're not also gonna talk about how they're reaching into the community to bring them into the show. Um, so that was something that really stood out to me. And otherwise they do talk about continuous evaluation um, uh, and they talk about peer evaluation externally. I was curious about so what that term means, but the education programs being free and open to the public is very mission aligned. Artistic leader seems to be a big deal in the early music communities. So shout out to them and um, they, and I appreciate them not just playing European music, but also venturing into Central and South America sometimes too, depending on who they're working with. Um, yeah, I'll sort of end there. Great, thank you. Any additional panel comments? Um, I'll just add a couple a couple notes. Um, I think that Ashraf mentioned that they talk about evaluation. Um, they present that, but it's not really elaborated on. So adding more information there, specifics would help with that. Um, and there's not a lot of information about racial equity, which was mentioned. So their strategic plan does mention incorporating IDEA into all aspects of programming and educational activities, but there's nothing related to the internal makeup of the organization. Yeah, there was also a note um, that said, you know, that they've addressed their hiring and operations procedures to be more welcoming and inclusive. Um, but there was no real information provided on how they did that. Um, and I'm not sure that it was well reflected. Um, so, you know, next time maybe address that a little bit more. Great, thank you. Any additional panel comments? Great, thank you. If there are no further comments, please update your scores in the system if needed. The next application is a request from Philharmonic Orchestra of Indianapolis. The mission is to serve a, as a musical hub for volunteer musicians devoted to enriching the community through inspiring musical performances and education. They were founded in 1941 they had a 2022 operating income of 187,878. They have 15 board members, zero full-time employees. The audience served in 2022 was 3,100. And with that, I will ask Megan to begin the discussion. 
Yeah, all right. Um, I thought that um, they this organization did a really good job of outlining some of their programming and what they do. I think it's great that they provide opportunities to engage with guest artists um, and plus educational programming. So I see that as building the capacity of creatives. Um, there's evidence in their application of strategies to build relationships and participation with new audiences. And um, they provide their programming in accessible locations. Um, I think that the partnerships could be strengthened to relationships with new audiences a little bit. Um, let's see, I, I think also as a volunteer organization that it really does attract diverse participants. They've kind of shown that. Also present a process for selecting members, but I didn't see anything about evaluation present. Well, Megan, I think we're losing you a little bit. Okay, while well, we wait for her to come back, um, let's go to Mia. Yeah, um, so I thought this was a pretty strong application. Um, I like that they offer free camps. Uh, I like that the idea that their choir is comprised of singer, singers from gospel choirs all around the region, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and I think expands the reach even beyond their organization because whatever training and experience they're gaining there, they're taking back to their other choirs. Um, uh, I thought the evaluation of students during the summer camps is valuable. I would have liked to see more info and data about the attendees of their concert programs. Um, didn't do one thing is for an organization that primarily serves black audiences, I am concerned that their board is predominantly white. Um, and I didn't see a clear path to kind of change that. Um, and I thought this was a pretty strong application. Thank you, Mia. Megan, we lost you halfway through. Do you want to? I know add my internet else? cut out. <laughs> I don't think I really had anything else to add. I was pretty close to being done. Um, I will say I have a note here that says that I saw that they have some strategies that they are working to implement to increase board and participant diversity. Um, so I guess, I guess I saw some evidence of that in the Yeah, and I think to that point, one of the comments made by James was that he would have liked to see the strategic plan itself address that um, board development piece um, further to explain the how. Any other panel comments? I had a couple comments here. Um, I didn't. Um, I didn't see a ton about partnerships um, besides the 25th anniversary of the gospel concert. My question there is, are those sort of partnerships going to continue on the 26th, 27th, 28th year? Um, and if not, what does their partnerships look like to continue to enhance that artistic programming within the community? Um, I do appreciate also the organization recognizes that orchestral music in, is Western and does intentionally feature work that challenges the narrative by incorporating works by composers of color and or women at each concert. My question there was, how many um, works um, in each concert because if it's just one it that goes back to the tokenization um, element there which um, is not ideal um, but I do love that they also include a student composite composition uh, annually as well it does seem to be that um, they're doing a ton of focus groups and um, talking to parents and students on how barriers can be removed in that programming for young people which is great um, I loved seeing the same person here as um, the organization we talked about yesterday, the um, Performing Arts Conservancy. Um, so I love that the community um, is is being revealed to us panelists here. Um, yeah, I'll leave it there. Those are my biggest questions. Great, thank you. Any other panel comments? Great. 
There are no further comments. Please update your scores in the system if needed. The next application is a request from Festival Music Society. Festival Music Society presents the annual Indianapolis Early Music Festival, which brings to the present the musical gifts of the past with historically informed performances, educational outreach, and engaging conversation. They were founded in 1967. They have a 2022 operating income of 215,168. They have 19 board members and zero full-time employees. The audience served in 2022 with 600. And with that, I will ask Lindsay to begin the discussion. Yeah, great. Um, uh, okay, uh, under, you know, when I was, I feel like I, I'm going to be pretty brief on this one. I'm interested to hear what uh, my fellow panelists have to say as well. Um, but as far as community impact, um, just sort of generally, I thought they had some work to do on building their engagement tactics that reach a broader and more diverse audience. Um, I thought they touched on how they address racial and socioeconomic equity, but I didn't see much evidence of that in their demographics or narrative portions of the application. So the, it, it just didn't seem like a, a complete story there. Um, I just had some questions. Um, as far as artistic merit, you know, I, I think they clearly demonstrated that they have a variety of programming that's designed and led by qualified artists. Uh, and that they acknowledge the needs and steps they're taking to increase diversity in audience and artists. Um, but again, they would have benefited from describing more details on how they were going to achieve those goals. Um, in regards to organizational capacity, um, they do note that the board is diverse in age and gender, but I, I think they're sort of avoiding the question because it doesn't address race or socioeconomic equity. Um, and there wasn't a mention of in the strategic plan of um, access, inclusion, diversity, or equity goals in regards to audience or board at all. Um, so those are my notes. I'll pass it off. Great, thank you. Any additional panel comments? I always have some. Um, it does seem like, um, yeah, it's uh, the board is all white and significantly white audience and paid artists. It does sound like they've been doing some work to increase the BIPOC performers they engage with. I'd be curious to know about the demographic breakdowns within there, and which of course is, is in the document to an extent, and then the audience diversity that might be correlated. There's also a time span question there around when did that 30, what's that sort of start date of that 30% increase? When, when do they, um, when do they make that measurement? Um, and I was encouraged to learn about the, um, about the references in the uh, season programming, not just being um, white European music, but there was something about American spirituals there, which comes from um, African American communities and and uh, the legacy of slavery. And um, that seems really promising and interesting programming that would affect and, and attract different audiences. I wonder about, um, how that extends beyond Western music or perhaps how that extends beyond seasons as well. Thank you. Great, thank you. Any additional comments? I'm gonna give this a try. I'm sorry, my internet seems to be a little unstable. Um, yeah. I think I just had some questions around, like they mentioned intentional equity efforts that have increased participation of diverse performers, but they don't explain what those are and how, how they were successful. Um, and so I think, you know, really, addressing that and the 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 outreach too I think I said it's mostly um passive and so I think that would help to be more specific when they're writing about strategies that build those relationships with new audiences thank you any other comments one thing I'll note from from James James's comments just to um, add his voice in this space. Um, 
He writes that he didn't see any evidence of, of a plan to diversify the board and staff, although it was somewhat mentioned in their response. They He wished that there was some some evidence within the strategic plan um, or, or a set plan in place to kind of see what that looks like. Great, if there are no further comments, please update your scores in the system if needed. Okay, the next application is a request from Indianapolis Youth Orchestra. The Indianapolis Youth Orchestra's mission is to develop and nurture the musical talent of young people in Indianapolis and central Indiana through quality music education and the rehearsal and performance of orchestral masterworks, both traditional and contemporary. They were founded in 1983 at a 2022 operating income of 246916 They have 12 board members, two full-time employees, and audience served in 2022 was 1939 and with that, I will ask Mia to begin the discussion. Um, some strong points is I thought that they've increased their tuition assistance, which is good to help those who can't afford um, their services. Um, I appreciated the addition of the late audition. Sorry, the addition of the late audition window uh, to capture and attract interested youth right away. I think that's important um, because I think I have a little one, so I know how their thoughts and interests can change drastically in a few months. So I like that. Um, it means that they know their audience and their attention spans, which is nice. Um, I thought they had strong financials. Um, some areas that I would have needed, I needed more was uh, strategy around diversifying their students, uh, strategy around diversifying their staff and board. Um, I didn't see any there. Um, so other than that, um, yeah, I think that's all I got. Great, thank you. Um, Lindsay, anything you'd like to add? Um, yeah, uh, I agree with a lot of you know what Mia uh, had to say as well. Um, I just had some questions as far as community impact. Um, uh, they they talk about how coaching and workshops um, to youth perpetuate career opportunity. Um, just go into more what what exists beyond like what happens to them once they complete these programs. Um, really like tell us how you're you're being successful in these areas. Um, uh, I did really like how they were increasing their efforts to improve the diversity of the conductors. I think it's really important to see youth, for youth to see themselves in these leadership positions, which I think could lead to greater diversity in the youth they're serving. So I thought, I thought that was a really important, uh, thing to note. Um, uh, but again, I just wanted to know how their efforts to engage underserved audiences were moving that needle. Just tell us tell us how, how it's going. Um, yeah, that, that's all I have. Great, thank you. Any additional panel comments? Um, oh, sorry, Ashraf, uh, I'll be quick. I just wanted to say, yeah, I think it's great that they are um, thinking about diversity in their coaches and conductors, but I wanted to have some concrete examples of how they're selecting them and how diversity is incorporated into that process. Um, and then I also had a comment about, you know, I felt the access se section addressed racial and socioeconomic equity pretty well in regards to participants, but it needed information about audiences um, that was kind of left out of this. Great, thank you. Ashraf, do you want to? Yes, thank you. You totally nailed what I was going to say, uh, Megan, around how they reached out to um, to students from diverse backgrounds and coaches as well. Um, there was a little bit of like equality versus equity conversation or like reference there. Um, 
and that was yeah nothing about centering students of color for this from justice really um it does just talk about generally um folks that are historically under resourced um but no real mention of race there so that's something to to think about and um the community partnerships also um there were some mentioned but nothing really that deepened the relationship or engagement within the community i had i had thought um Beyond that, I do appreciate that the artist in residence program has some career exposure elements. That's not just a typical conductor or a musician. You could see youth youth um, in roles that are beyond those and that they may not have known about otherwise, which I thought was really powerful. Um, and I love that the artistic leader is an alum of the organization. It's a powerful testimonial to the organization's impact and relevance. Um, and again, yeah, more um, more conversations around creative thinking around meeting students where they're at beyond school connections would have been helpful too, but it seems like they're really relying on the school connections and like the, the, you know, conductors and the, uh, and the folks that are like in the schools to get to students. But um, I think they could be more creative to how to get to students beyond that. In the budget, there are lower personnel costs in 2023, which wasn't explained um, and no student, student tutoring expenses. And there's also a bunch of in-kind missing stuff that appeared um, in the text around like Butler University Partnership, ISO, office space. Um, that wasn't represented in the budget either. So some questions there. Um, also lower board contributions in 2023 and same with fundraising special events, but higher program revenue and higher ticket income. So um, just wondering about why um, why that shift took place. It wasn't really explained. Um, yeah, I'll keep it there. Great, thank you. Um, I have one additional comment from James. Um, he he just kind of noted similar um, to some some pieces that y'all have already stated, but um, he noted that the organization uh, attended training uh, called Arts for All, um, but doesn't share um, intentional evidence of implementing the learning from that training. Um, so they. They use the wording in their response that says that they're sharing, um, but he wanted more information about how they were implementing some of the, the learnings from that space. Any other um, additional panel comments? Great. If there are no further comments, please update your scores in the system if needed. Okay, the next application is a request from the Indie Convergence. Indie Convergence connect, connects artists, communities, and their environment to cultivate new ideas by fostering collaborative experiences that inspire solutions and develop lasting changes. Um, they were founded in 2007. They had a 2022 operating income of 255760 they have five board members, two full-time employees, and the audience served in 2022 with 6,500. And with that, I will ask Ashraf to begin the discussion. Thank you. Um, this was a really interesting um, read, um, partially because it took me a while to figure out what this organization did. It seems to be a really big um, uh, big presence in the local neighborhood and community um, and their focus has shifted over the years from sort of the summer camp <laughs> maybe I shouldn't call it that but I kind of classified it as a sort of creative summer camp um, where you're sort of coming up with works in progress and talking to other folks about it and and building community around um, creativity at large um, to more of like a locally based uh, community development organization. Um, so um, that's tough to be able to communicate. Um, I don't think it was communicated terribly um, well here. It's always time to improve, always good times to improve, but um, that that was really tough to understand sort of what the organization did. Uh, it didn't, it took me a couple of reads to get there, but um, that said, the stage crew training program seems like a really awesome niche and community that these guys fill, um, training the local workforce on something that is going to be a forever um, necessary piece of community projects and community um, work. 
and their core residency program, which I mentioned as a summer camp, which I hope is not insulting, um, includes travel and housing stipends, which are competitive. And, and that's uh, amazingly increased their racial and cultural diversity in their applications, um, which um, of course it did. I'm so glad that that's happening. And yeah, I love that it's made up of both indie and out of town artists to cross pollinate. It seems to be part of their whole thing. And their fiscally sponsoring of other organizations really builds a local economy too, especially with their new building that they're uh, renovating. Um, free workshops um, that they hope to expand is awesome. This a rising tide festival has super deep local connections and sounds like plenty of free program programming in the city. I had a question about um, the lack of indigenous voices in that, um, if it is so, um, so place-based and space-based, um, there's no real conversation around bringing in indigenous voices who had been stewarding that land since time immemorial. So something to think about for the organization too and how they incorporate um, the voices of the folks who's been colonized um, and, and sort of pushed out of that space. Otherwise, um, partnerships were cool to read about. I, it would be helpful to know about these partners, just a little blurb about each of them would be super, super, super helpful. Um, like Da Vinci Pursuit, don't know what that is. Sounds cool, um, but who is that <laughs> and what do they do? Um, otherwise, um, yeah, again, working on the mission statement to tell us what they do would be super helpful and how they do it. Um, and the uh, key staff members and board members being part of both the national arts and culture space and the literal local community um, is a really great makeup. Um, and I appreciate that a ton. They talk about evaluation and how it um, uh, assesses strengths and areas for improvement, which is vital. Um, and yeah, the board notes um, need, sorry, the budget notes need a narrative that explains the difference in the two years there's just so there's just so drastically different that it was hard for me to um really find myself in that budget um there's a lot of things that they're not doing this year that they did last year uh, and 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 back back and forth um but otherwise um i'm really impressed by the annual goal setting between organization leadership and the board that sounds um transformative for the people who are working in the organization and there's clearly a continuous improvement um lean they want to seek feedback they want to get better at doing what they do um and yeah the programming committee that involves the community um, is pretty amazing. The fact that they insist on one Spanish-speaking board volunteer and one Spanish-speaking community uh, programs committee member is also great. And I'll leave it there. Thanks. Thank you. Any additional panel comments? I'll add one. Um, I like that they regularly solicit feedback from their staff, volunteer, artists, their community. However, I wasn't sure how they actually use this data to inform any decisions moving forward. Um, I know that's a problem a lot of people get into. We collect a lot of information and then just look at it and don't actually use it to inform decisions. Um, so I would have liked a little more detail about how you use that information. Um, and I was concerned about the size of their board um, and the demographics of their board. Um, I think there's a lot of room for improvement there. Um, yeah, other than that, I echo a lot of what Ashraf said. Thank you. Anybody else want to comment? Yeah, I just wanted to make a note that I thought um, the mission was was pretty vague. Um, but I got the impression, you know, they want to help artists. It's clear they want to help artists grow, but it wasn't clear to me how they measure that at all. So I don't, I just didn't know how they were in the end. I didn't know how they were achieving their mission. Um, I think what they do sounds really cool. Um, but I, I think there's some more administrative work. Um, I wanted to sort of see evident in this application. Thank you. Um, I have one comment from James. Um, at one point in the application, they write, 
Um, the board was encouraged to attend the DEI offerings, um, but he thought that the commitment um, could be stronger. I wondered if that was the entirety of the, the DEI plan or what, what that looked like for, for the board um, to kind of pursue this further. So just want to bring that in the space. Any other further, uh, panel comments? Okay, there's no further comments. Please update your scores in the system if needed. The next application is a request from Ibada Dancers Company. Our, their mission is to provide cultural, cultural enrichment, discipline, arts education, and opportunities to build and empower youth, young, art, young adults, and communities through the art of dance. They were founded in 1989. Their 2022 operating income is 257,633. They have five board members, two full-time employees, um, and the audience served in 2022 was 5,805. And with that, I will ask Megan to begin the discussion. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think this sounds like a super cool organization. Um, and I think my big comment overall on this application is that it was not very specific. Um, and I think it needed to just have, it was pretty general and I would have liked to have specific examples. So for example, um, the access section was hard to evaluate, um, whether they employed strategies that increase participation among new audiences. Uh, again, more specific examples would help there. Um, and I don't, I didn't feel that they addressed socioeconomic equity in terms of access. Um, but their partnerships, I thought seemed strong and really helped build cultural understanding and increase variety. Um, they're building the capacity of creatives and providing equitable engagement opportunities, which is great. Um, the programming, I think was clearly fairly clearly explained. That was one one strength in this application. Um, I didn't see any process of evaluation presented in the narrative. Um, and then I also was wanting more information on the artistic leadership. So there's a tiny bit included in the organizational capacity section, but it doesn't really tell us, you know, about the experience of the artistic leadership. Um, I thought the artistic samples were good quality. I couldn't get one of the links to work though, unfortunately. Um, and I thought it would help if they actually added the explanation of the artistic samples. I think that was one of the pieces that was asked for in the application or that they could upload. Um, I thought that they showed a commitment to racial and socioeconomic equity in their strategic plan, um, those things in their strategic plan. So those things were included in multiple of the goals in there, but um, I thought it was lacking in plans for recruiting and retaining an engaged and diverse board and staff. Um, I think that board development really should be a focus of this organization. Great, thank you. Mia, anything you'd like to add? Um, I echo a lot of what Megan said. Um, some points that I wanted to call out is, I like that they are providing opportunities not only to learn dance and choreography, but arts administration as well. The world needs more arts administrators. <laughs> um, so I thought that was interesting. Uh, I would have liked to see uh, if they survey their students. Um, there's conversation, there is talk in here about uh, surveying the parents, but I would have loved to see how the parents versus the students, how they align um, or don't. Um, I think that would provide valuable information. Um, and I thought they had clear and measurable goals in their strategic plan. Thank you. Any additional panel comments? There's one um, note from James here um, around organizational capacity. He wanted to hear more um, about the strategy to, to maintain or improve board diversity. Um, he saw that in the strategic plan, it kind of lives at the departmental level, which leaves some questions for him. So he just wanted some more clarity there. Any additional comments? Okay. And no further comments, please update your scores in the system if needed. 
All right, our next application is a request from Storytelling Arts of Indiana. The mission of Storytelling Arts of Indiana is to enrich, connect, and entertain through the art and experience of storytelling. They instill its value, value in everyday life by providing professional storytelling performances, historical storytelling performances, and other outreach events where community members participate by sharing their own personal stories. They were founded in 1987. They had a 2022 operating income of 259,858. They have 18 board members, one full-time employee. The audience served in 2022 was 3,297. And with that, I will ask Lindsay to begin the discussion. Thank you. I gave this application high marks. Um, I uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can hear my roosters in the background interrupting. Um, uh, yeah, I thought this was a strong application. Um, I thought it, the organization is clearly committed to serving their entire community. It just, I, I thought it was really well done. Um, uh, I was pleased to see that um, they created an IDEA action plan along with um, a strategic plan. I thought that was really thoughtful. I was very happy to see that. Um, I thought they provided excellent examples of how they showcase diverse voices and stories, both the storytellers and the audience. Um, and I think the edu educational components and outreach to school age youth was really thoughtful. Um, and they highlighted stories of, of underrepresented communities. Um, as far as artistic merit, um, I thought they had great diversity in their 2023 season um, and, and that they were responsive. Um, so they know, I, I liked that they included this example of how they were responsive, um, uh, noting that in the past, it was difficult to get audiences to attend programs featuring storytellers of color. So they, they had like a 40 people attended a program they thought should have had a lot more people. So they sort of pivoted and combined and put two storytellers together and, and that worked really well. And so they're gonna continue to devise programming in the same way because they saw success. So to me, that really demonstrated a commitment um, and that they um, can be nimble, um, and and just try to get get what they're doing out to in front of as many people as possible. Um, I thought that they did a good job of showing their results in increasing board diversity. Um, and I thought they had a really well thought out strategic plan. And I also appreciated hearing about the of by all change network, um, which helped guide them through the DEI training, which I think is something maybe to be shared with other local organizations. So I, I that was, I, I, I enjoyed reading about that as well, something hopefully my organization can utilize as well. Um, and I thought they had, they had a dedication to evaluation by collecting their audience and collaborator feedback consistently, as well as demographic info. I thought that helped tell their story as well. Um, so I'll pass it off. Great, thank you. Any additional panel comments? I just wanted to add that I really liked um, that they made the connection that there should be Black interpreters um, interpreting for Black storytellers. Um, and they they did that before the Super Bowl, where now people are talking about it a lot more, the importance of that. Um, but I, I like that they were ahead of that um, and understand that that is very, very important. Um, to be able to get the, to communicate the stories effectively. Thank you. Yeah, and similarly with um, with those working with young people, um, they had been, uh, or just generally black storytellers with black participants in general, whether that's young people or their other mentorship programs that are like previously incarcerated folks or other marginalized populations that they work with in their outreach programs. Um, they've been doing that for 10 plus years that they report and like that, like, that's super impressive. Like you knew that way before you got that feedback a long time ago. Um, that's badass. Um, and then yeah, interpreters hired for a majority of their pr productions is great. The virtual access is dope. Um, and uh, I really love their evaluation question, um, or at least one thing that they referenced 
that seem really simple and profound, which is whether participants are more likely to tell their stories as a result of telling, attending our programs. Right? That just seems like so simple and easy um, and tells you uh, exactly what, what they're looking for. Um, and I also appreciated the sophisticated methodologies that they explained in the demographics ex explanations box of how they get, um, how they evaluate or how they get to their demographics. That was a really nice touch. Um, ED makes the programming selections mostly, booking the tellers themselves. Seems like that could have some gatekeeping elements, if not, um, you know, if not community informed or if not like fully um, uh, thoughtful. Um, so something to look out for and maybe add some checks and balances there. Um, but otherwise, um, yeah, um, there's a couple budget notes and questions I wanted to call up. There's no really explanation around why individual contributions is down. They talk about applying for an NDA, NDA grant, and that's part of their strategy of getting more grants. Those are very competitive, though, and what if that doesn't come through? Um, so that's a question. Um, and yeah, there's no there's no explanation about like what expense number nine is on general and admin. <laughs> it's a, it's like forty seven forty seven thousand dollars, so it's a lot, and it wasn't there last year, so that's just a big question for me as to what, like what is that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, a pretty impressive organization. Great, thank you. Any additional comments? Okay, there are no further comments. Please update your scores in the system if needed. Okay, and after this next review is complete, the panel will take a 15 minute break followed by the Sapphire Theater Company. Um, our next application is a request from Footlight Musicals. Uh, Foot, Footlight's mission is to produce musicals and other dramatic offerings and to provide for education and trainings of persons in the theater through hands-on experience and classes in the various stages of dramatic and musical theater. They were founded in 1955. Their 2022 operating income was 298579 They have 12 board members, zero full-time employees, the audience served in 2022 is 9,413. And with that, I will ask Ashraf to begin the discussion. Thank you. Yeah, this is a really um, fun organization to read about. Um, they, um, yeah, they talk about their, I'll just go into the community impact and the talent section. They talk about youth education programming taught by professionals and educators. It's unclear how they're paid. Um, likely the camp costs directly subsidize their fees, but they talk a lot about being an all-volunteer organization and nobody gets paid. So um, I was hoping that those uh, educators certainly got paid for that work, um, but that was unclear in the text. Um, it's also unclear if youth programming has any efforts underway to diversify their makeup or in targeted outreach that exists there. They use a the term color conscious casting, which I uh, hate. <laughs> I'm kind of offended by that term. Um, so um, just think about think about that. Um, and uh, that said, the three out of five recent shows directed by BIPOC directors is great. Trans non-binary cast members and four out of the five recent shows. Also awesome. Um, but uh, and they do seem to take diversifying the stage and the audience seriously. It's just that those kind of um, those elements um, provided me a little bit of pause. Um, I love that they do dance workshops if there's a dance heavy show coming up so that everybody has an opportunity to develop their artistic capacity, whether or not they audition for the show. Um, and yeah, the story about the mistress of props um, um, using a wheelchair and needing that ADA access, ensuring that the organization has that access for them uh, and the facilities were able to upgrade and accommodate um, is, is awesome and shows their commitment um, in their actions. Um, again, no one gets paid, um, which limits the creative economy benefits, but the, there's economic ripple effects of the 20 weekends of shows per year um, in the community, what with parking and dinner and drinks and um, accommodations, all that kind of stuff. Um, I appreciate that there's some big shots that have had Footlight as part of their journey and now are coming back and giving to the organization. That's nice. Um, and yeah, um, larger patrons get larger seats. I mean, that's friggin' awesome. Um, uh, ASL interpretations for free first Thursday previews is badass. And um, yeah, free community events um, are referenced as well, which helps build artistic um, presence in the city in general. 
Um, I also love that they partner with nonprofits to raise funds for them and target their outreach for them. Love it when you do that. Uh, organizations keep it going. Um, and I and sounds like there's a burgeoning partnership with the neighborhood community association to talk about um, how they could increase arts experiences even more in that neighborhood. Um, beyond that. Um, the season is selected with a show selection committee, which includes membership of the Footlight Ensemble, as well as a board liaison who has a diverse makeup and age, experience, expertise, and racial identities. And they explicitly choose shows to appeal to Black and Latino communities, as well as all communities, um, which is a funny thing to include there, too. Which is it, you know? Um, and then, yeah, criteria includes diverse casting and drawing diverse audiences, among other things. Um, I love that they. Um, solicit and review proposals. It's unclear how those proposals and calls go out, which does have implications on who gets access. That seems a little gatekeepy if you're not tracking that well. Um, and open auditions are great. Um, the, the evaluation of the season seems pretty informal and iterative based on conversations with cast members, crew, and the orchestra. Um, and yeah, in terms of budget, it's copy and pasted year over year, which seems pretty simple, um, which I actually appreciate. Um, just the space and mortgage payments are a little bit different. Um, otherwise, yeah, the expenses would benefit from being broken down a little bit more um, to understand what's actually happening there. Otherwise, yeah, the board policies seem thoughtful. It's a working board. And there's a junior board, which keeps organization relevant for younger patrons. Nobody else talked about a junior board in the applications that we all looked at. Um, so I, I love that they're they're engaging the younger board uh, mix through that. Um, 2019 was our last strategic plan. Um, it sounds like um, they've done some measurements against that in 2022. Um, but otherwise, audience participants are still overwhelmingly white. Um, maybe that's just who answers the audience surveys, but um, the board does have a little bit more impressive demographics, relatively speaking. I will end it there. Great, thank you. Megan, anything you wanna add? Just a couple notes I had. Um, I think there's some really amazing stuff going on here. I also made a comment on the, um, color conscious casting, I asked, like, is there actually training around that um, to say that you do that or ask them to do that? But, you know, how how is that really um, carried out um, to think about that too or explaining that process? Um, I also had a comment about, um, let me see. Oh, the show selection committee. Um, I think there's a a vague um, statement about multiple people of color participate on that committee, but I think it would be great to give some demographics or a percentage or how many people sit on that committee and the breakdown of that committee. Um, and to also explain how the open audition process really strives to promote auditions to diverse performers. So what strategies are you using for outreach there? Um, I thought the artistic documentation also could be strengthened. Um, to really show what this organization does. Great, thank you. Any other panel comments? Great, if there are no further comments, please update your scores in the system if needed. As previously announced, all scores will be kept confidential. All right, now it's time for our 15 minute break. Please be back at 2.31 um, to begin the review of the Sapphire Theater Company. Zach, can you put up the slides?
Welcome back. We'll give a few to get our panelists back on. Start recording again. All right, welcome back from our 15 minute break. We're gonna jump right back into the public review. As a reminder, the panel scores all applicants in three main areas, artistic merit, organizational capacity, community impact, and all three criteria center racial and socioeconomic equity. Our next application is a request from the Sapphire Theater Company. The mission of the Sapphire Theater Company is to produce professional theater that entertains, inspires, and connects in order to enrich the human spirit, compensate artists for their talents, and contribute to the cultural growth. They were founded in 2008. They had a 2022 operating income of 310486 They have five board members, two full-time employees. The audience served in 2022 was 1,763. And with that, I will ask Ashraf to begin the discussion. Thank you. This is a really awesome um, application and awesome organization to learn about, um, really unique. Um, I really um, appreciated their dedication to paying artists. It's clearly in their mission statement. Um, and it's not just actors, but it's all sorts of creative folks. It's visual artists, designers, fabricators, teaching artists, facilitators. Um, ton of emphasis on casting um, folks of color or hiring folks of color to do um, some of that creative work I talked about. And it represents audiences, um, again, that meets the demographics of, of their communities that they're serving. Um, there are professional development workshops for educators and youth workers, along with corporate trainings to help build imaginative and artistic capacity, create ripple effects of vulnerability, self-reflection, compassion, and empathy, all things that are good for the community, I think. Um, and yeah, free public facing programming um, that isn't the type that they uh, sort of are hired to um, hired to put out there. Um, that looks like in an after school um, educational program for youth, programming for youth. It also looks like um, virtual sometimes, but it allows them to um, allows them to meet their audiences where they're at. Partnerships are essential for the organization. They talk about 100 indie orgs and 50 city events. Um, they do seem pretty vast. It's like an event company for hire, but it's also facilitators and teaching artists doing arts integration or racial equity trainings, immersive entertainment. It's also scenic design, public art fabrication, and generally bringing concepts to life, it looks like. Um, and based on their examples shared, their presence in community does enable many kinds of arts experiences in indie, and it does deepen engagement in community. They do seem kind of like a linchpin to India's creative community in a way, um, in terms of like just the vast amount of stuff they're able to do and, and contribute. And I was really impressed by their theater of the oppressed strategies to deepen that engagement. Um, that on-demand framework for how they partner um, really instills a nimbleness makes them a good partner, allows them to say no or say yes, depending on what they have going on. I loved that they talked about how they decide, on, decide to take on partnerships. They talked about considerations include whether opportunity fits the artistic vision, pursuit of the mission, organizational capacity, and reaches underserved audiences in meaningful and impactful ways. It's friggin' awesome, y'all. Um, otherwise, artistic merit, the performance facet of their work sounds very compelling in terms of centering marginalized communities and social justice. I appreciate the bios for each of the staff members who shape the programming. They seem experienced and knowledgeable. The evaluations methods do seem to vary depending on what kind of work they're doing, but they included a core set of questions that they asked, which I thought was really, really helpful. Um, and in terms of but, um, organizational, excuse me, capacity and budget, um, they had a ton of clear budget notes and reasonings behind their projections. So thank you for that. And then um, they broke down the responsibilities of the staff and the board in a really helpful way. And yeah, um, it seems like the way that they have a menu of cultivated programs enable recurring revenue opportunities, which is a kind of a brilliant way to frame their sustainability plan. Um, and yeah, the way they talk about racial equity in general is just so authentic, makes it seem so natural and easy to incorporate 
genuinely within their work, all organizations should talk about racial equity that way. Um, it's really, really inspiring. Um, it's like not even a question of like, they need to work on this, but it's just something that they need, they just do. Um, and that's really, really helpful to be in that frame. Um, I'll pause there. What else y'all got? Great, thank you. Megan, anything you'd like to add? Yes, I just had a couple of things to add to Ashraf's always so thorough, um, and I have a lot of similar notes to him. Um, I, uh, yeah, I think they they do a really good job taking their programming to places, um, which is a great way to make it accessible. They do say they offer free programming, um, and I think that they could potentially do show more evidence of doing more outreach to make people feel like the events are for them or welcoming. Um, the partnerships that they listed um, are great. I don't think that they fully explain the extent of like collaboration. They do differentiate between collabor collaborations and payment for services, but it's not clear what some of those partnerships really are. Um, I did also just sort of have a question about the production services facet of the organization. Um, I think it's awesome um, and it provides jobs for artists, but it does feel a little bit separate in some ways from the mission of the organization um, on some levels. And then um, I, one other note I had was that the application includes broad statements about diversity and inclusion, but it would really be strengthened if they include some sort of data or specific examples of how they accomplish, um, you know, some of these things rather than just saying it's done when recruiting actors, facilitators, production artists, et cetera. So. Great, thank you. Any additional panel comments? Okay, if there's no further comments, please update your scores in the system if needed. As a previously announced, all scores will be kept confidential. The next application is a request from the Indianapolis Shakespeare Company. Their mission is to share the joy of live professional theater with all, to build community with indies near Northwest and beyond. They were founded in 2006, had a 2022 operating income of 311,496. Um, they have 22 board members, zero full-time employees, and the audience served in 2022 is 3,378. With that, I will ask Mia to begin the discussion. So I enjoyed reading this application. Um, I thought they provided strong examples of how they support talent in different ways. Um, I appreciated their commitment to accessibility through ASL interpretation and language translation. Um, I like that they utilize their partners to also help evaluate their programming. Um, solid financials, clear and feasible goals. Um, one area that I would have liked to see, so racial equity seemed to be a commitment to the organization um, based on their programming, but I'm not sure how socioeconomic plays into their decision-making. Um, so I would have liked a little more information about that. Um, yeah, other than this, I, I really enjoyed learning about this organization, thought they had experienced leaders, um, yeah. Great, thank you. Um, Lindsay, anything you'd like to add? Um, you know, actually not really. I think uh, my notes were pretty concise and um, I really agree with everything that Mia said. I really, I scored this one um, really high and I, I thought that they had a really clear and detailed strategic plan. I really enjoyed reading through that. So um, kudos to you. Um, and and they they had really um, they had a goal to increase their board company and staff diversity um, that they they were just really talking about specifics and what it meant to reflect their community which just that being so clear and honest about what that looks like for your organization is is really important so um, yeah I, I really like this application as well. Thank you. Any additional comments? 
Um, I just wanted to add that I thought that their artistic documentation um, and just their artistic section really provided great examples of how their programming is responsive to their constituency. Um, they talked about their move to Riverside Park area and that changed how they cast and reimagined presenting these classic plays, which I think is really, really a cool example. Um, I think the one question I had was how casting is done and how the plays are developed or selected. Um, I had a little bit of a question there, so found it hard to evaluate whether they're truly providing like equitable opportunities for people to participate. Thank you. Anything else? Go ahead, Asha. Yeah, so um, similarly, um, I was impressed by this organization quite a bit. There was a few questions I also had. One is, they talk a lot about, um, um, about their place-based programming. Again, like you mentioned, Megan, uh, in terms of their Riverside work, there is a lack of perspective of indigenous voices in that work. It's, uh, it's, it's compelling, but it would just benefit from those voices for whose unceded land was colonized and took away um, before generations of settlers came in. Um, and I just didn't hear any of that uh, for such place-based work. Um, that's trying to be really, really in, in that space. Um, they talk about gender fluid casting practices. That's pretty cool. They talk about um, they talk about their um, their uh, work in yeah partnering to make sure that the Shakespeare and, and other um, works become more relevant to the community. Um, and I appreciated um, this real estate work. It sounds really really. Um, Sounds like they're investing in community without exploiting community, you know, and that's like a really hard line to walk. Um, it's leading while listening while also adding to the creative economy at large, um, which is really admirable. They do mention a couple of things about circulation and vertical development in terms of the gig working artists um, that they work with. It came off a little bit insulting to me, <laughs> especially just in terms of the plight of artists as gig workers, self-employed folks whose income isn't guaranteed year to year. And they're talking about it as though that's a strength. And maybe it is, but it just was a little bit um, tone deaf, I think, in terms of what artists actually need, which is stable incomes and, and benefits that are portable. Um, and you don't get that with this circulation vertical development thing that we're talking about. Um, but otherwise, I also scored it very highly. Um, and it's great that actors get a chance to work in different parts of the organizations, in arts administration, education, learning new skills and trades, giving, giving opportunities in the office, as well as on the stage. But again, um, yeah, I wouldn't talk about that. Um, I, would, I would also connect that to the plight of artists as gig workers, which um, is part of that creative economy that we want to grow and, and develop. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and just as a reminder, um, we have a, a fifth panelist who is not able to be with us today. Um, so I have some comments that I want to share in his um, absence. Um, he writes um, that there need to be some clarity on the strategy of maintaining diversity at the board level. Um, there, the application mentions the need to do so, but there was no clear steps um, outlined. Um, he says that the strategic plan mentions community engagement through a diversity lens for community um, and board diversity as a weakness. Um, also, uh, the board involvement in the strategic plan, um, point number one, um, for the community, but there was no not clear if that strategy will render diverse board members. So he wanted some more explanation and in, in kind of the implementation and the aftermath of that. So i um, just wanna share that in the space too. Any other comments? Great, if there are no further comments, please update your scores in the system if needed. Okay, the next application is a request from Summer Stock Stage. The mission of Summer Stock Stage is to enrich our community through theater by inspiring young people to learn, connect, and perform. They were founded in 2006 that a 2022 operating income of 349,193. We have 12 board members, zero full-time employees, um, and the audience served in 2022 is 4,000. Um, and with that, I will ask Ashraf to begin the discussion. 
Thank you. Yeah, I loved, um, love, just generally love reading about organizations that work with young people. So thank you um, for doing this work. Um, I love that the program alumni are coming back to support the 20th year of the organization. It shows the impact of the organization and the mission of developing artists over time. The free How to Audition for Musical Theater workshops are awesome, promotes equitable casting, professional artists and arts administrators as faculty and alumni. I think totally activate the local creative economy and build capacity of young emerging talent. Also puts the professional artistic workforce to work. Um, and it allows, like they say, um, folks to pass off their talents and expertise to the next generation of artists. I like that framing all the time. Um, besides that, they talk about, um, yeah, whenever possible, um, employing their, their alumni and putting their emerging artists in leadership roles lead artists roles as 50% BIPOC and 25% LGBTQIA plus is impressive as they model what it looks like to succeed with those identities for younger folks who see themselves in those roles. Um, so that's really great um, that their leadership reflects what they want the um, future of Indies artistic leadership to uh, look like as well. They talk about all positions being paid, but I'm not sure if that includes participants in addition to staff and faculty, um, as mentioned before, paying young artists to perform and to be in after school programs helps them make those choices over a summer job or perhaps, um, yeah, other things that they need to do for their socioeconomic um, household. Um, it, yeah, otherwise, I love that they use state of the art technology like video screens and upgraded sound equipments great way to build the future workforce to understand what industry standard equipment feels like. Um, the reframing of the Eclipse program, not just for alumni, has, this, has exciting implications for youth of color interested in those opportunities. And yeah, um, the reduced um, price for the Academy program sounds great. I hope there are still some full scholarships available. They didn't talk about that, um, but that's still a lot of money for some families. Um, special needs performances, um, uh, special needs performers and technicians are framed as being open to, and it just would, I would just love more inclusive language um, around active recruitment and active um, outreach to special needs performers and technicians, as opposed to just being open to those. Um, let's see, they provide their participants with a social media kit, which is kind of awesome um, so that they can sort of handle getting that outreach out to their communities um, partnerships and tend up to being with venues that their shows are produced um, and sometimes they consult with schools to mount productions which is a really great way to use their expertise in community um, otherwise um, the evaluation components didn't really impress me a ton. Audience surveys, participant surveys, it does seem pretty informal, um, but the fact that their alumni are still coming back to them, I think speaks volumes as well. Lots of budget questions um, around um, why the projected incomes are so much higher and why some of the program revenue is down and all of that um, in terms of contributing income as well. So not a ton of explanations to those would love some more clarity in the, in the future years and um, I appreciate the clarity of the clarity of their organizational plan sounds like board committees help the staff with day-to-day -day operations and um, yeah I'm just gonna go ahead and start start wrapping up thank you uh, any other panel comments There are no further comments. Please update your scores in the system if needed. All right, our next application is a request from Discovering Broadway. Um, their mission is to bring Broadway incubation to Indiana. They were founded in 2019. They had a 2022 operating income of 385,416. They have 20 board members, two full-time employees, and the audience served in 2022 was 2,000. And with that, I will ask Megan to begin the discussion. Thank you. Um, so this is a fairly new organization. Um, I have a couple notes just on how some of the sections of this application were filled out. So the mission statement includes a lot of information that's not the mission statement. Um, and I would recommend, you know, there's vision and other programming in there that should show up in the section that asks for that. Um, 
some of their large budget differences, like income for 2022 versus 2023, are not explained. There's a doubling of administrative personnel, and I think that should be addressed in the um, budget notes explanation section. Um, I think that they're they're certainly increasing the capacity, you know, of creatives and serving the arts community. But I actually had a really hard time understanding exactly what they do. So I felt the programming wasn't fully explained in the artistic section. Um, they did show knowledgeable and experienced artistic leadership. Um, I didn't see a process of evaluation presented. They did present a process for selecting plays in the narrative. Um, and I thought the artistic samples were also good quality, but it still left me with some questions about it. So it's clear they're a presenting organization on some level, but it, there are other things alluded to in here that I wasn't clear on. Um, I also didn't see a lot of specifics on racial and socioeconomic equity in the application. Um, their strategic plan had clear measurable goals, but there was no mention of increasing diversity of board or staff in the strategic plan or narrative. Um, they kind of mentioned that they currently have a diverse board, but again, not how they're going to retain that or didn't acknowledge maybe a need to increase the diversity that they already um, present. Yeah, I think I will, I will just, I'll stop there. Thank you. Um, Mia, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, um, I like how they discuss mentorship in the application. I thought that was thoughtful and, you know, talked about how it can't be forced. Um, so I, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, one thing that continued to rub me the wrong way is the term at risk. Um, it was used throughout the application and they never define what they consider at risk to be. Um, and for me, that's just coded language. Um, they could have just used more clear language there. Um, again, I didn't see a strategy provided about how they intend to increase BIPOC participation and board representation. Um, I know there was some information about wanting to increase some sponsorship funds, um, but uh, money isn't always a determining factor as to why people participate. So take that into consideration um, as you're building your programs and you know growing your organization. Money isn't the only reason, isn't the only barrier to participation. Um, so, you know, you got to make sure you're creating a welcoming, uh, a truly welcoming and inclusive environment for all. Um, with that, I will pass it off to whoever else. Thank you. Any other panel comments? Um, there were some um, just really impressive output um, that the organization's done, really impressive fundraising from corporations that allows additional access to community, um, which I appreciated. I also had the same notes around at-risk youth, Mia, so thank you for mentioning that. Um, and uh, it was unclear how they reach out to um, reach out <laughs> to students or um, college or, 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 or otherwise. 10% um, of venue seats dedicated to those low income at risk or BIPOC youth um, is admirable. It does seem kind of low. Um, and um, it does seem like they're growing at a really fast pace, like doubling their, their budget year over year. It's definitely not going to be sustainable. Um, and I would love to hear more, more, more about how they want to sort of ease that into some sort of landing spot uh, to where they will eventually be. I don't know if they know that yet, um, but I do appreciate the high high goals, high level goals of the strategic plan that were shared. It allows me to understand more about how they're trying to move and how they want to serve Indiana and Indianapolis in particular. Thank you. Great, thank you. Any other comments? Okay, if there's no further comments, please update your scores in the system if needed. All right, our next application is a request from Indiana Performing Arts Center. 
The mission of the Indiana Performing Arts Center is to produce professional theater that promotes and celebrates the African-American experience, attracts diverse audiences, supports and develop, develops African-American artists, builds the capabilities and self-esteem of African-American youth, and showcases African-American talent. They were founded in 2007. They had a 2022 operating income of 411,315. They have 10 board members, three full-time employees, and the audience served in 2022 was 11,852. And with that, I will ask Lindsay to begin the discussion. Thanks. Um, I thought that this organization did a lot of really cool programming, um, but I did, I got the sense that their, their application felt like it was kind of rushed, which I think did a disservice to all of the cool things that they're doing for their community. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just go right into sharing some of my notes. Um, in regards to community impact, um, they write about a few programs in the education section that really stood out to me as that were also really great engagement tools. So I thought the book to stage program and the Performing Arts Student Trading Academy that teaches reading in a non-traditional way um, was just like just some really wonderful programming um, that a community is lucky to have access to. Um, in regards to access, though, there weren't always numbers uh, that backed up their programming for underserved populations if it was successful. So just felt like there needed to be a little bit more fine tuning in some of these sections. And I also thought that maybe their participant and audience data was swapped. So just really going through um, with the fine tooth comb, um, you know, before you hit submit, I think it is crucial because I, it, it um, just gave me pause. Um, in regards to artistic merit, I thought their leader, you know, it's clear their leadership has, she has years and years of experience, um, but I didn't see any evidence that there were any evaluation tools. Um, I think a lot of emphasis was placed on the artistic director's role and I got the impression they make all the programming decisions, um, but I'm not sure else has, who has a say in what that looks like. Um, so just something to look out for. Um, I love that they provide stipends to singers, dancers, actors, musicians, but again, I was confused about their numbers. Um, uh, is it 65? Is it more than 70? I, I was just a little bit confused about how they were qualifying. Um, who was a paid artist and, and what their demographics were, were saying. Um, or capacity, um, I didn't see what the measurable goals in the, in the plan were. Um, I thought it was a bit more broad and thematic. Um, the, the strategic plan is being executed and then the second year of capacity building um, that enabled them to expand opportunities for Black youth and arts of color, um, where the av availability of such programs is limited. I was just... I, I just wanted a bit more in some of these sections. Um, I was confused about the board member demographics. The numbers didn't add up to 100%. I think I, I, don't, I just couldn't make sense of how, how that happened. And in some of these narrative sections, it was just copy and paste it. It was the same information over and over again. I think just really um, uh, giving attention to a specific section and making sure that you're answering that one question, not all questions in one section would have benefited. Um, this application a bit more. Thank you. Any other panel comments? Um, if there are no further comments, please update your scores in the system if needed. All right, our next application is a request from Hoosier Salon Patrons Association. The Hoosier Salon is a statewide nonprofit artist service organization whose mission is to create an appreciation of visual art by promoting Indiana artists and their work. They had a 2022 operating income of 442,016. They have 29 board members, one full time employee, and the audience served in 2022 is 12,125. And with that, I will ask Ashraf to begin the discussion. Thank you. Um, I always love reading about service organizations like these, um, which are really essential to the creative economy and the ecosystem. Um, its membership 
does not have anything to do with the quality of one's work, just their relationship to Indiana and their ability to pay the dues. Um, I didn't see anything about um, what happens if I'm unable to pay the dues um, or what happens if one is unable to pay the dues and how that shows up in their um, diversification process. They focus on artists um, who could use the resources, not just the ones who can um, who can sort of be juried uh, and and have been juried and been curated before. Um, so I love that equitable practice around increasing talent and in the community at large, um, really focusing on the folks that could use their services. Um, love that their staff is not directed to repeat the same artists in too many shows to ensure inclusivity. Um, and yeah, they bring in jurors and workshop instructors from around the country without a focus on Indiana artists, which um, yeah, is could be another way to increase that local creative economy generation opportunities is to employ local Indiana artists or Indianapolis artists um, as those workshop instructors and jurors. Um, let's see, they do talk about scholarships for first time entrance to, um, to some competitions. Um, and yeah let's see they yeah like i said they spoke to diversification and membership but not quite audiences the audiences being the annual exhibition audiences pop-up galleries showcases etc um this partnership with the electric co-op um or electric corporation <laughs> um producing an annual art contest it was adorable loved hearing about it um and it sounds like it utilizes the strength of other partners. Significant partners referenced, but none really particularly innovative or increasing the arts experiences at large with the community. Um, the artistic merit, let's see, there's no artistic, there's no executive leadership this year. However, the artistic staff they do have are trialing, highly trained and work with artists and are working artists themselves. Um, 20% increase in new artists year over year is impressive. Would be curious to know about the demographics of those artists, 20% year over year, and if they reflect uh, any measurable goals around diversity of the city, or the county, or the states. Um, their goal of full county participation by 2025 is measurable, um, and I appreciate that. Um, they talk about a special effort to recruit members currently and traditionally underrepresented demographics. They don't talk about how they measure their special efforts, though, and they don't talk about evaluation a ton either. Lots of budget questions. I won't get into all of them, but I wrote, wrote them out in my notes here um, um, to reference when um, when y'all ask. And it sounds like the goals of the strategic plan are great. Creating a second and more diverse annual exhibition that may appeal to a broader audience is awesome. Um, massive 29 member board, but it does sound like the committee model has been working well there. Um, they talk about an executive director hiring after three years vacant. It's un unre unrepresented in the budget though, that executive director salary. So that was a little bit confusing. And it's unclear how the demographic information was determined. They seem to reflect some specific numbers some places, and some are just best guesses. That 29 member board is shockingly white for how many members there are. There's no mention of diversifying it um, and the um, application materials at all. Same with the paid artists. Um, and again, um, yeah, I, I, I really urge the organization to collect demographic information consistently to help them measure goals. Um, Thank you. Um, Megan, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I just had a couple of additions to what Ashraf has said. Um, there, the, the application acknowledges this desire and need to attract a more diverse membership and then the participation in their programming, but they really didn't offer any strategies for doing so. And I agree with Ashraf, the partnerships are an area that could really be strengthened. And I think that's one really good way to, you know, address um, participation and membership potentially. Um, I also had a question about the, the demographics information, some of that. Um, it shows that artists are paid, but it wasn't clear how. So is that the jurors? Is it via awards from the juried show? Um, I think it would help to explain that. And then, I also commented that their, their strategic planning 
is weak in outlining strategies for recruiting and retaining a diverse board and staff. Thank you. Any other panel comments? Um, I wanted to add, uh, they talk about in their jury selection process that, you know, artistic quality is the focus, artistic quality is the focus. Um, but if you are not providing a jury that has actually diverse perspectives, you can't accurately judge if something is good quality. Um, because I'm, I'm more familiar with dance than I am music, so I wouldn't know the difference if something is good or not. Um, the same can be said with different um, artistic mediums and, you know, cultural things. If you don't have those perspectives, you can't accurately assess artistic quality. Um, so that's something to keep in mind and more of a reason to why you should have strategies outlined to increase diversity. Thank you. Any additional comments? Okay. There's no further comments. Please update your scores in the system if needed. The next application is a request from Pattern. Their mission is to build a strong infrastructure that supports and values all creatives, fostering a culture of innovation and equality in central Indiana. They were founded in 2011. They had a 2022 operating income of 490,729. They have 14 board members, three full-time employees, and the audience served in 2000, uh, 2022 is 5,064. And with that, I will ask Mia to begin the discussion. Um. To start this one off, I thought I really liked their website. <laughs> I just wanted to say that I, I liked it. It was visually appealing to me. <laughs> um, but with that, um, I thought that they had strong training programs in place that provided solid stipends. Um, I like that they recognized that they needed to increase those. Um, and so they put built that into the budget. Um, I thought they they provided the measures of success for each of their programs, um, strong artistic leadership. Um, I have a note here that uh, their budget demonstrates large increases in income and expenses, but I thought they explained it extremely well and justified it. Um, so, you know, those budget notes go a long way for me. Um, to do, to do. I thought their racial demographics were rather diverse. However, I was concerned about the large racial gap in between which artists they actually pay. Um, so, you know, you should work on, you know, increasing who's actually getting the funds um, that you guys are designed to pay. Uh, let's see. Um, you know, again, the diversity, they mentioned that it's a priority, but I didn't see a strategy outlined in how they plan to do so. Um, so, you know, they should have built that into both the narrative and the strategic plan a bit better. But that's all I got. Great, thank you. Um, Lindsay, anything you'd like to add? Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the one of my first notes too was just how beautiful I thought their website was. Um, just the just well designed. The, their outputs are are just really beautiful. Um, uh, in regards to community impact, I I did kind of love how they addressed the reality of brain drain. Um, I I don't think anyone else <laughs> used that terminology, and I think that's just a, I, I think it's a, a thing that goes unsaid, but I, you know, I, I appreciate that they're providing, you know, opportunities that will prepare creatives for their workforce, but also work to keep them in the community. They're trying not to prepare them <laughs> to be exported, um, which I think is really, really important. Um, uh, I did, though, think that some of their answers were kind of meandering. Um, maybe some sections were a little bit more difficult to answer than others, like the access section um, was just a little bit, they, they, kind, they answered a lot of, they were answering other questions in that space. And so um, 
I, I, I just wanted them to have focused a bit more um, and, and, and show us that they're really understanding what's being asked of you. You know, I want like, look to your rubric, look to your guideline um, and let us know, you know, again, how you're measuring success. Um, uh, um, there was one more note. Um, oh, just a positive note. I, I just thought that they're doing a lot. They're they're operating the black. They started paying their leadership salaries, which great. Like let yeah, let's pay people for their work. Um, um, but they still rely heavily on volunteers. I I just think they're doing a lot and moving quickly. And um, was just really happy to learn more about what they're doing. It's I thought it was pretty unique. Great, thank you. Any additional comments? I have one quick one that I commented on in both the community impact section and the artistic merit section. I agree, you know, again, these organizations are doing really incredible things. I love to see all the cross pollination too between organizations um, happening. My big question was, it's really unclear how artists and creatives are hired or selected for opportunities. What's the selection process? Do people apply? Um, same question. It's unclear how interns, artists, creative, or offered or opportunities or hired for those opportunities in the artistic section. So um, I feel like some clarification around that to show that it's, you know, there's some sort of an equitable process for that. Um, interestingly, I had a note in my, I'm going to go look at this. The strategic plan says that the organization has no paid staff and is run by volunteers, but then in the organizational capacity section, they reference three full-time staff and personnel do show up in the expenses in the light item. So I'm going to look at that strategic plan again. But Thank you. Any additional comments? Yeah, just a couple of small ones. One, I really love the uh, subscription to the magazine, super affordable, 30 bucks for two issues, no paywalls. Um, they do seem to represent a number of um, artists of color in the community, and that seems to be a boon for Indiana and Indianapolis and generally the community itself. Stitchworks. Um, the fashion um, community has a place to go here, a resource, and um, with a high ceiling in terms of how it can support local manufacturing jobs and workforce development, creative entrepreneurship, generally cross-sector economic vitality. So I was really, really, really stoked about that. Um, and their community partnerships definitely seem like in a couple of categories, some are transactional, some are more transformative. Um, and um, yeah, I think both are appropriate. I'm not, not mad at that. I do um, I do not see a ton of information about their CEO shared, and I would love to learn more about them um, and how that is, how they influence the organization. Um, and one last thing was, oh yeah, the demographics seem to indicate that the org's participant and audiences are majority BIPOC. However, that's not reflected in the org's board, staff, or volunteers, nor the number of paid artists, staff, or fellows. Now, the board is 43% Black, Indigenous, and other people of color, but um, uh, still doesn't quite represent their, the demographics of their audience and participants, so something to work on. Thank you. Great, thank you. Any other comments? All right, if there are no further comments, please update your scores in the system if needed. Our next application is a request from the Lafayette Square Area Coalition um, doing business as the International Marketplace Coalition. Um, the mission of Lafayette Square Area Coalition is to revitalize the Northwest area of Indianapolis by creating a vibrant multicultural environment where everyone has the opportunity to experience and learn about global cultures and by cultivating an international community conducive to attracting and retaining sustainable economic development for the benefit of this community, state, and region. They were founded in 2006. They have a 2022 operating income of 500 1,775. They have nine board members, three full-time employees, um, and the audience serve in 2022 is 35,000. And with that, I will ask Ashraf to begin the discussion. Thank you. Um, yeah, I really loved reading about this organization. They, um, it's like so unique, um, the fact that they're getting a ton of federal grants around community development and um, 
uh, and yeah, housing and urban development in general is is really great for the arts community, the cultural community specifically, who they serve. Um, as far as community impact, um, they display works of immigrant, refugee, and culturally diverse artists living in Indy. Um, doesn't pay artists as much as it should, but does provide space to sell and exhibit works. It barters a rehearsal space for performance groups, highlights their work in video um, so they can pr promote themselves. And it does develop the cultural workforce by providing them space to celebrate their cultures and an opportunity to monetize um, as they see fit no commissions or vendor fees and that's great um the space itself seems accessible open six days a week public transit um word of mouth and google is how they've been getting audiences that's pretty passive in terms of audience development um it doesn't necessarily seem to be um an issue for them though they have this great food guide um for people to get involved with and in language and cross-cultural marketing when, with ethnic media wherever possible bilingual programs to create and increase access their um, day camp program for youth that's specifically designed by artists and educators seemed great i had a question around how um, how that how they choose those artists and how much they pay those artists and educators and yeah uh partnerships um with cultural groups helps those organizations and cultural groups form their own service and advocacy organizations i was really inspired reading about the african council of indiana and the afghani group that they talked about um, and generally i love that they show up to other cultural events that they don't host as a way to forge long-term trust with those communicate communities it's quite sophisticated um, and that they put money back into their own resident businesses whenever possible um, and then by design, they're deepening engagement in community and increasing arts experiences and cultural experiences in, in, in the city. Um, yeah, as far as artistic merit goes, um, demographics of community serve as impressively um, BIPOC and 100 plus languages is a lot. Um, evaluation methods seem pretty um, pretty informal. And not a ton about the efficacy or the experience or credentials of their founder and director, but I did hear a little bit about the gallery curator who makes themselves available and, and does active outreach into cultural communities. Um, but that is a little bit gatekeepy, or it could be if if not checked appropriately. So something to look out for. Um, appreciate the budget notes. Love that it's a black led organization with all BIPOC staff. Love that they all speak multiple languages and the uh, Strategic plan is a little bit basic right now, but apparently they're working on a more extensive one. And yeah, that's what I got. Great, thank you. Any other panel comments? Great. If there are no further comments, please update your scores in the system if needed. All right, our next application is a request from the District Theater. The District Theater enriches and strengthens their, our community by presenting, supporting, and amplifying the voices of performing artists, particularly those who represent the diversity of human experience. They were founded in 2021. They had a 2022 operating income of 648,243. They have 19 board members, one full-time employee, and their audience served in 2022 as 12,126. And with that, I will ask Megan to begin the discussion. Yeah, okay. Um, so this, um, again, this organization, I think showed evidence of building capacity of creatives with you know just what they do and they're um, working with artists. Um, I was unsure about the process for providing engagement employment opportunities, so it was a little harder for me to evaluate whether it was equitable or not. Um, their demographics show some evidence of providing equitable engagement, but again, I would have liked an explanation in the narrative. Um, the artistic merit narrative for me was really hard to read. Um, it was a lot of information. Uh, that was presented in a way where it was sort of unclear when we moved on to like which program or play information was associated with. Um, and so I think just presenting that and with clear divisions between programs so that it's easier to understand would have helped me um, with that. Um, there was very little information on artistic leadership and evaluation process. Um, 
the artistic documentation was really well curated and showed what the organization does. Um, and their partnership section is very, I felt was very general. There's an extensive list of organizations that they partner with, but there's no explanation of the nature of those partnerships at all. Um, and then I felt for a fairly new organization, they showed you know, evidence of recruiting a diverse board. They could diversify their staff more. Um, their strategic plan had clear measurable goals and there are some aspects of racial and socioeconomic equity within that plan. Great, thank you. Um, one of our panelists, Mia Hooper, had to step off. Um, and so I've asked uh, Arts Council's Director of Equity Partnerships, Cheney Jones, to step in and read out Mia's comments. So Cheney, I will hand it over to you. Hi, everyone, and thank you, Nikki. Um, Mia Hooper, she has shared some notes, and she said under District Theater, there are extremely strong partnerships and community connections. Clearly outlined, they are addressing racial and socioeconomic equity through their various programming, community connections and black theater program. And then similar to what you mentioned, Megan, under the artistic merit narrative, um, she said this, this section was a bit hard to follow due to formatting of the response. However, it does appear that they are presenting a wide variety, variety of high quality performers and also that she liked that they have surveyed their audience to help inform some of their program decisions. Yep, and that's Mia's comments. Thank you, Cheney. Any additional panel comments? Just a couple here. I really like, uh, like you mentioned, Cheney, the um, black, the free black training hub opening in 2023 um, was really exciting. Um, and I love that it actively engaged the theater community, the black theater community for years before it happened. Um, their work with the Latinx audience also um, targeted outreach um, funded by a Glick was really interesting and exciting. Um, those numbers aren't super reflected in the demographics, unfortunately. Um, um, and I appreciated that they offered free space for community, but 6% is a pretty low number. And I would love to know if they're gonna uh, plan on increasing that anytime. Um, and yeah, the free outdoor events, indoor events to play readings, um, staged music and arts experiences um, definitely do seem to increase access to arts experiences throughout the city or certainly in that neighborhood. And yeah, I agree to what y'all said about the partnerships fully. Um, not a ton of reference to the experience, knowledgeable artistic leadership, but that did make it clear that the way they select their, um, their shows and all that's informed by the audience um, as well. And in terms of organizational capacity, there's a ton of budget questions that I had. I won't go through them here, but I just wanted to point those out um, for the organization to follow up on afterwards. Um, and yeah, the um, organization's thinking on how they make decisions based on the data they collect is encouraging. It seems like a steady path of sustainability if they consist they consistently stick to those evaluation practices and of course the fiscal balance too but um the board's training on dei also seems very exemplary but the all-white staff is somewhat disappointing in the 100 percent um yeah um the audiences don't add up to 100 percent either um, in terms of demographic tables so that was a little bit confusing but otherwise i appreciate reading this great thank you any additional comments Great, if there are no further comments, please update your scores in the system if needed. All right, our next application is a request from the Indianapolis Film Project doing business as Can Can Cinema. The mission of Indianapolis Film Project is to enrich the culture of our city through independent film exhibition, uh, education and community engagement. The Can Can Cinema, Cinema is an art house theater powered by the Indianapolis Film Project. Um, they were founded in 2019. They had a 2022 operating income of 794,421. They have nine board members, three full-time employees, and the audience served in 2022 is 30,000. Um, and with that, I will ask Lindsay to begin. Um, this application was another one that I scored very highly. Um, I, this, this, 
I, I come to this in Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> um, what a, this is just, they have some really great things going on. Um, so uh, I'll run into my notes here. Um, one thing I noticed um, as a person in like placemaking work that I, it jumped out to me, I was really happy to see that they did two years of neighborhood engagement while they were designing the space. Um, kudos. Um, and when COVID hit, they still kept up this important work and provided programming. Um, and they acted as a fiscal sponsor for nearby Black-led social enterprise. I just, I, that's great. You're a great neighbor. Um, I can't believe that they serve 30,000 people. <laughs> like I, um, I, I think that's, that's just like a great and believable number. Um, they're really intentional, intentional about choosing what they screen to highlight BIPOC, LGBTQ plus stories and creatives that might not have been screened in indie at all otherwise. Um, I think they have accessible uh, tickets um, and uh, accessible and affordable tickets. Um, and I was impressed by the fact that they have so many meaningful partnerships so early in their life. Um, I think that shows how much they're needed in their community and that they're filling a gap. Um, I also think that by offering meaningful opportunities for youth to experience film, they're really strengthening that community. So um, I thought that was a great job as well. Um, they have work to do to increase audience diversity. Um, so I did wonder what some of the ways were that they were encouraging the residents living nearby to give input and help shape what that programming looks like that could be um, something that, that would help move that along. Um, let's see, I'm going to try to wrap it up, Nikki. <laughs> I have a lot of notes in this organization. Um, uh, I, I thought that their budget explanation was clear and how they expected to reasonably grow um, this year. The staff was qualified, but they know it needs improvement in the diversity realm. So um, yes, do that. Um, I think that will only strengthen your organization as a whole. Um, again, I just, I really enjoyed learning about this. I'll pass it off. Great, thank you. Any additional panel comments? Yeah, so um, similarly, um, I really love reading about this organization um, and the fact that they're so new and fresh. I love that neighbors get free memberships. I love that um, there's outdoor free community nights, there's gender neutral restrooms, access devices for, the, for those with low hearing. Um, what they didn't talk about, as you mentioned, Lindsay, is how they attempt to increase the feeling of belonging for those who don't see themselves as film people. Um, clearly, film people have a home here, but uh, what about the folks who um, who don't necessarily identify that way? No intentionality around goals for diversing, diversifying the partnerships or the programming either. Um, they do say that they mindfully consider access and inclusion for their decisions about film selections, makeup of the film and conversational panelists, and the programming and promotion of the youth audience uh, projects, but they don't talk about measurable growth towards that stated goal or how they would get there. Um, but I do appreciate them, um, you know, being a good neighbor, like you said, Lindsay, in terms of being like a community mural grant recipient, putting that money back into BIPOC artists and community hands. Um, it does seem like there's a high demand for partnerships uh, since they started programming uh, post pandemic. Um, that does do seem collaborative, if transactional, to allow the organization to serve more broader culturally specific audiences by design. Um, and I love that the name of the cinema is a deep cut local literary reference. Very badass. Um, uh, otherwise, no evaluation mentioned besides e news surveys, eventual pre-movie QR code surveys, which does sound like it could work well. Um, and only passing mention of artistic leadership skills, experience and qualifications. Um, I did have some questions about the notes, I'm sorry, the budget notes specifically in terms of foundation support doubling and individual contributions doubling due to hiring an advancement director, still seems pretty ambitious, um, but the healthy surplus projected um, uh, in case any of those goals get sidelined or smart. Um, and I love that they're trying to pay down more debt as a priority of the organization. Um, and yeah, I'll just kind of leave it there. Great, thank you. Any additional comments? 
Um, there's one uh, comment I want to bring in this space. Um, this is from Mia. Um, she she writes that she recognizes that while the staff and board don't necessarily reflect a wide diversity of voices, they make it a point to partner with organizations and artists that do. Um, she does say she would have liked to see a bit more information about how they determine artistic quality when it comes to the films they select. Um, and everything else is in agreement with, with what y'all have already stated. Great. If there are no further comments, please update your scores in the system if needed. All right, our next application is a request from Benjamin Harrison Presidential Site. The mission of the Benjamin Harrison Presidential Site is to increase public participation in the American system of self-government by sharing the life stories, arts, and culture of an American president. They were find, founded in 1966. They had a 2022 operating income of 848,490. Um, they have 16 board members, 10 full-time employees, um, the audience served in 2022 is 30,059. And with that, I will ask Ashraf to begin the discussion. Thank you. I was embarrassed not to know that Benjamin Harris was a president. My my bad, everybody. But um, 23rd president, very cool. Um, and yeah, like super arts rich in terms of the culture inside this presidential center. I've been to other presidential centers that don't sound this exciting. Um, I love that they have a resident playwright and a resident creative director um, who they offer stipends to, but otherwise it's all volunteer actors um, that are put to work four times a year at least. It does seem to indirectly develop the artistic workforce by providing those unpaid opportunities in this extremely unique space. Um, and it adds to the region's creative economy for sure. Um, Black History Month programming puts Black artists work annually, um, uh, which is cool. It could do that more often than just Black History Month, though. I'll put that out there. And um, yeah, their uh, Future Presidents of America program seems to prioritize students of color. Not sure about what targeted outreach may happen there to ensure that it does. And they use the term majority minority, which makes me cringe a little bit. Um, Otherwise, the visual impaired curriculum sounds great. Tour translation provided in multiple languages, free admissions on Independence Day, all great. And um, yes, this uh, the Juneteenth festival that they started, they're working with partners like Freetown Village and Brick Street Poetry, who we learned about earlier. And of course, um, 11,000 students, um, fourth graders specifically, in Indiana come through every year, um, two thirds of which are free and reduced lunch, which is awesome. Um, yeah, the fact that they're a polling site, and they also have citizenship history classes there and have a um, and have that um, citizenship sort of celebration there too, is a really cool way to bring in new audiences to the organization. That doesn't seem to be a big deal um, for the organization. They are on a bunch of travel um, travel sites as a place to go to. Uh, so I don't know if that is a huge um, element of their strategic plan. They do talk about um, evaluation in the access section with an eye for continuous improvement around re the reputation section also around quality and attendance and earned revenue. And um, no mention, however, of the artistic leadership and their qualifications or how they um, how they influence the organization's programming. The commissioning of new plays helps cultivate new audiences for the Indiana theater community, certainly. And it offers um, theater inside of a museum home, which is rare. And um, yeah, like I said, that main program, that Candlelight Theater Company, is an all volunteer group, which I hope that they can pay artists for in the future. There's no reason they shouldn't for such a big organization, for such an organization that has such deep values, um, especially with the history of President Harrison and his wife. Um, otherwise, budget notes and questions, there's a bunch of questions I do have in terms of um, no additional explanation of additional lines that they added. Um, and the operated deficit year over year, which is concerning. Um, and generally the budget could just use a narrative. So please add one in future years. Um, fiscal st stability does seem to be a value of them for four to five years of clean audits. And I love that they know that they have more work to do around inclusion, inclusion diversity, equity, and access. Um, and they and there's no idea, I have no idea how they track the de demographics. It seems like best guess. Um, I don't, also don't know how what they mean by participants when they give us those demographics. Um, 
yeah, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, Lindsay, do you have anything you'd like to add? Yeah, very much agree with Ashraf. Um, just a few things to add. Um, uh, they note that they're increasing, increasing their efforts to survey guests, but they don't mention ways in which they might use the tool to learn about ways they can address diversity, equity, or inclusion goals. They say the audience is diverse, but how I interpret what they seem to mean was that people came from many different states, which I don't think is, is you know, I don't think we're, we're using the same way of defining this word. Um, they do mention that they're addressing accessibility issues in the ways of, you know, being ADA compliant, but you should do that anyways. Um, uh, let's see, I'm, their space and hard, artifacts and, and artwork are, are just really, really beautiful. And I'm, it's cool that there's some community programs that happen there as well. Um, uh, they mention under organizational capacity that, um, you know, their, their board, they've achieved gen, gender parity in their board, but um, maybe move that needle in some other ways and be specific about how you might do that. Um, and I also did like how they, they noted that they have uh, immigrant services to, you know, that the naturalization programming I thought was was really cool. But in, in general, I think that this the the answer to this question wasn't fully answered. Um, uh, I think that there's just a few things that could be improved upon, so. Great, thank you. Any other panel comment? I just um, wanna add to this. Um, I agree with Ashraf and Lindsay on some of the great things this organization is doing. I felt that their artistic um, merit section really relied heavily on the partnership with Candlelight Theater um, and that it, sorry, I'm not in the, I was reading this section, not in my comments, um, that, um, you know, that's a strong partnership and great, but I do think that they could um, work with that organization to pay artists or do that especially because it sounds like they're charging ticket admission prices for those things so that was sort of one thing i just wanted to add on that section great thank you um i have a couple of comments that i see um in the system from mia so i just want to bring those up um she she notes there's not much information provided about how they evaluate their programmatic goals as it relates to artistic merit um the, the programs are definitely in line with the mission of the organization. She enjoyed reading about the different types of programming options. Um, she had some concern that the actors are all considered volunteers while the playwright receives a stipend. Um, so she says, especially as this aligns with the stated increase of racially diversifying the group of artists, just something to, something to look at. Um, she said she appreciates appreciates the focus on increasing accessibility of their space and working with consultant to do so because she recognizes that updating old buildings to be ADA compliant can be challenging. Um, she appreciated their work with the Indiana School for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Um, she says there doesn't seem to be a large amount of partnerships that occur, especially with other arts organizations. So something to think about there. Um, and then um, she found um, the artic um, she said there are articulated strategic goals, but she found the strategies on how to achieve those goals fairly vague. Okay, any other comments anyone wants to share? Great. So no further comments, please update your scores in the system if needed. All right, thank you. As previously announced, all scores will be kept confidential. So this concludes today's panel session. The 2023 Annual Grants Program panel um, continues tomorrow, April 13th at 1 p.m. with Fonseca Theater Company and with a whole new panel. So I wanna give a special thank you to, to this panel, Panel A, um, uh, for all their, their efforts and their work in this um, and for their comments uh, the past two days. And I want to thank our, our grant applicants as well for all of their work.
Um, please visit the website for um, the webinar links and the full review schedule for the remainder of the week. As a reminder, grant applicants will be notified of their awards by Friday, May 5th. Um, and then just as a reminder, shortly following the 2023 award announcements, the Arts Council will launch an evaluation process to inform potential art annual grants program design changes, similar to our work with arts leaders in 2019 to co-create the current evaluation criteria. In early May, a survey will be sent to all org leaders and grant contacts, and we will also host several feedback forums to assess the program. Thank you all, and we will see you tomorrow. And panel, please stay on. <laughs>